Why do we care about the problem? Okay? I don't like the term fake news. At the European Union level, people prefer to talk about this information because the fake news kind of you know, makes people think that the primary problem is that they are false. Okay? This is only part of the problem. Okay? The real reason why we worry about fake news is because they have become a political weapon. Okay? This is why we worry about them, not because they are false. And actually, even some faculty <coughs> organizations, if you look, I don't want to name them, but if you look what kinds of claims they are checking, oh, this is not a photo of a puppy doing whatever. Who the heck cares, really? I mean, there are so much more important things. People are dying, there are things happening, right? You should be spending your time doing that, not, you know, some stupid things that nobody cares about, even if it's popular, okay? So, basically, I mean, if you're going to remember one thing from this lecture, it should be that, you know, the real problem with fake news is not that it's false. It is, that's actually, it's, it's a political weapon. And this is why, and, you know, the talking to journalists, they are telling me that the best ma manipulation, the best kind of propaganda is when you tell the truth, only the truth, but not the whole truth, okay? So, actually, to be a political weapon, it doesn't have to be false, it can be true, okay? I can change the facts, I can bombard with only one side of the story, and all these kinds of things. So, basically, this information, this is what people in the European Union level talk about, is something that is both, you know, false, but it also means hard. Okay? And this is, this, is, this is the thing. So if you think about it, that would be fake news. This is false. This is saying that, I don't know, Barack Obama is not going to, you know, to celebrate Christmas because that's offensive to Muslims. That was not true. But this is only part of the thing. The thing is, this is a political weapon. This was before the elections. Okay? This is innocent. This is satire. Okay? And actually, under the definition of uh, fake news, of disinformation of, of Facebook, that would not be harmless. This is kind of, this is satire, satire is protected speech. Okay? So this is harmless. Okay. So why should we fight the fake news? Okay? Again, I prefer this information, but because fake news is a preferred term, I'm, you know, going to use that. So, um, well, obviously, the first, the first reason is that, um, you know, it was obviously uh, used to manipulate elections in the US before they can Brexit and so on and so forth, you know, many, many examples. Um, and, but actually, there are other aspects. Here in India, people literally get killed because of fake news in WhatsApp, right? And I mean, a nearby country, in Myanmar, there was a genocide, right? That, according to the United Nations, started because of fake news on Facebook, okay? And Sir Kim Berners-Lee, the person who invented the web, he was complaining that his invention is now weaponized. And this is why we need to work on it, not because it's false. Okay? That's why I don't like this thing. There are other aspects. There is a financial aspect, right? So actually, this was in 2013. It was even before we started talking about fake news. So hackers hacked into the Twitter account of Associated Press and set two explosions in the White House and Barack Obama was injured. And this was for $136 billion to be lost in the stock exchange. Okay? And hacking Associated Press is a major thing because there were three fact-checking organizations, Associated Press, Reuters, and France Press. And again, we're talking to journalists, they tell us, if it's verified by two of those, we stop checking, we know it's true. Okay, because those are the best ones. Um, then there are like anti-vaxxers, right? So they have you know, like a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Now the next question, can you win the war on fake news? Okay, what do you guys think? Okay, so let me, let me kind of, you know, tell a story. So, um, last year in April, um, I was uh, participating in a panel uh, for three hours in the Interparliamentary Assembly. Um, and uh, so there were like, three representatives. There was one from France, it was me and somebody from India. Actually, that person from India is a specialist from Proto. It's uh, Sharini Joshi, and she's uh, founder of Habar Lehani. I don't know if you know this newspaper. Anyway, so it was interesting. They are kind of saying, what legislation can we pass, right, in, the, in our parliaments to get this problem solved? Mm -hmm. If you told them, sorry, it's not so simple. I mean, need cooperation. So first of all, this is trending on social media platforms. They are in the best position to kind of to do something about it. But in government, certain kind of hate speech maybe you can regulate. And, you know, again, in civil society, you kind of do fact-checking, you get better journalists. And then, of course, we researchers can do something. We can develop different kinds of tools, right, to detect it. Now, coming back to the question, can you win the war? Okay, there, there are different things, and actually there is one country in the world that is already winning the war. That's Finland. Okay? Finland, back in 2014, after the, the, kind of the events in Crimea, they got very scared that they can be next. 
And they started an extensive program actually to educate their population, right? At all levels, in the field, but also kind of at all levels, to tell them about what is fake news and how to detect it and so on and so forth. And now they have indications that they are winning the war. And I mean, obviously there is a correlation between media literacy. See, Finland is at 76%, and some Balkan countries are like at 10% or something, right? So, and, and you know, how resilient you are to, the, to, the, to, the, to this phenomenon. Obviously, the problem at the European Union level is that 76% of the young people don't recognize the fake news, which is according to the Euro Commissioner Maria Gabriel, who is responsible for the problem. Okay? Now, the question is what do you want to do? Well, my favorite solution, it's only one element of the solution, is actually to educate people, because it solves a lot of things. If people recognize it, if people know they are being manipulated, they are not going to be upset about this, they are not going to act based on this, they are not going to share it. It actually grows exponentially. If I send a spam to a thousand people, it ends there. If I send a very bad viral fake news to a thousand people, it can reach millions, right? Because people share it. If people stop sharing, that solves a lot of the problem. And then people that are investing money into this are going to lose interest because it doesn't work. Okay? And this is something that people knew. Joseph Goebbels, the minister of propaganda of Nazi Germany, he was saying, propaganda doesn't work if people know about it. So it's very essential they don't know they are being manipulated. And actually, yesterday, I was here around Delhi, and I came across this. Don't listen to rumors, but if you do, don't believe it. And this is Gandhi. Okay? Wow. I was, I was kind of, you know, quite interesting to surprise. I mean, to me, if you actually implement this, that's going to be huge, right? If you think about it, it's rumor, now you should not spread it. Not even to say it's false. Not even to say it's false. Because you are keeping, you know, helping it spread. Okay. So, with those ideas in mind, we have a Tambi project, which in Arabic means warning, awareness. And basically what we want to do is we want to limit the spread, the effect, the impact of fake news, propaganda and media bias by making people aware of what they're reading. We want to show them what they're reading. Okay? And there are three key kind of unique elements about our project. The first is we put this into a news aggregator. Think of something like Google News that signals to your home. This is really something suspicious here. We are also developing media profiles where in fact, kind of, instead of checking one claim or one web page, you kind of have a characteristic the source. You kind of give you a profile of their biases and so on and so forth uh, in the history. And then we do fine grain propaganda analysis. We are kind of telling you how you are being manipulated with specific propaganda techniques. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about those two, and at the end, I'm going to show you this. So in this project, we are collaborating, we have been working with, uh, for several years with MIT. Uh, we have been working with Al Jazeera, RTI, and Associated Press, and uh, actually with Tech Mahindra, Meta Liquid, and Vinova. More recently, we are working with uh, Facebook, and we are starting working with the United Nations, and so on and so forth. Um, so next question. Is fact-checking the solution to this information? Many people believe this it is, right? We just need to do fact-checking. Now, I mean, it's certainly important, but you need to spend the effort, as I said, in the things that matter, not, you know, some fake uh, picture of some... Okay, so, there has been a lot of work into checking a claim, a claim like this, our Musk, you know, I'm going to take whatever, claim is something that you know who, is, who has said it, it this thing caused him a lot of problems, or rumor, it's not clear where it's coming from, something like, okay, Putin is dead, somebody else is ruling Russia, uh, or an entire article, like saying here, oh, Barack Obama is dead, and somebody, no, sorry, Barack Obama, uh, when he was talking to soldiers, he told them, why don't you do, do a coup against Trump? Which is not true, but you know, it's something that you can find in the world. The question is, can you fact check every single claim in the world and every single article, right? How many claims have those fact checkers checked? 10,000, 50,000, some like 3,000? In, in, and then they're even wasting resources on, on things that don't matter, right? And there are, you know, fake news, there was a study last year, uh, influential one uh, coming from MIT, that fake news travel six times faster than real ones. And there's actually another one that is kind of less famous, but to me much more important, that shows that 50% of the lifetime spread of some very, very viral fake news happens in the first 10 minutes. Okay? So suppose that some kind of false claim, you know, kind of uh, weaponized claim reaches 6 million people, in the first 10 minutes is going to reach the 3 million. After that, you can do something, but it's already too late, okay? So we have to act fast. And that's why we propose to go after the source, not checking the claim, checking where it's coming from. The moment when you put something, you typically don't just put the claim. You put the link to a website. 
Now you don't create a new fake news website for every fake claim that you make. You're going to reuse, which means the chances are you can go and you can profile in advance. And at the moment when you put it, we are going to tell you whether it's in a reliable source or not. And this is why I like to say that we can fact check the fake news before it was even written. Because the moment when you write it, you paste it somewhere, and then we can tell you, can you trust this website or not? Okay, I'm going to show you this in the system. So how do we do it, this kind of profiling? Well, you go on the website and want to tell you whether it's biased and whether it's kind of, you know, uh, factually it's reporting or not. Okay, so the most important thing, of course, is what they publish, right? Analyzing the language and all that. You also look into what is there about them on Wikipedia, okay? And also what is there in their social media profiles, what kind of users read them, you know, what is there in their YouTube pro profiles, um, some traffic information from Alexa and the structure of their URL, and so on and so forth. And you can, uh, you can go further, we have other ideas as well. I mean, th this is why it's nice. Because if you try to check just one claim, I mean, it takes time. If you have a claim like the economy of India grew by 30% last year, well, we can go and you can check it very, very fast in some table or something, right? But if I say there was a bomb explosion in whatever village, now that's not so easy to, to, to check, right? I mean, kind of you need to see what people are going to say in social media, you need to see, you know, kind of how mainstream media are going to report or ignore it, and so on and so forth. It takes time, definitely more than 10 minutes. And regardless of whether you do it automatically or manually, right? <laughs> um, but here we can go and we can analyze them. You know, we can take time and so on and so forth. And you, can, you don't need to make a decision based on one claim, based on one article, but you can aggregate and you can also get other information sources. So, about the text, right? First of all, is there a connection between the title and the voice? Sometimes you have very bombastic title, right? Because nobody reads. Uh, they just share, and the linguistic structure, is there sentiment, is there few emotions, are there moral categories like war and religion being discussed, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and then Wikipedia, is there a Wikipedia page in the first place, right? Uh, and then what is there? So for example, here, you see, oh, this is a semi-monthly conservative editorial magazine, and he tells you, oh, conservatism. Conservatism means that you are kind of, you know, that you are kind of right-wing, it's less at least in American politics, and kind of, you know, um, anyway, this has some, some, some indication about neutrality, a little bit. I'm going to come back about this. Twitter, how do you self-represent? Okay, so first of all, is there a Twitter account? How many, is it old? Is it just like created freshly? You know, is there location information? Is it verified? There's no more verification on Twitter, but anyway. And then how do you self-represent? This is very important, look here. This is the paper, this is the source that published this thing about Obama, okay? See what they have. An army combat vet, NCO, crusader, republican, take back our country, modern America first, right? So to a human, this tells you this is kind of right-leaning website, and probably kind of very right-leaning, and kind of this, this graph that shows that the further away you are, the more partisan you become, the less factual you tend to be. So kind of this is kind of correlation. Um, and then, see, there, there's no link to their website. Why? Normal media do have link. They want to attract traffic from there, and so on and so forth. There are many things that the URL, look at the URL. AngryPatriotWoman.com. Alternative Media Syndicate, 100% fed up. ABCNews.com.com. I mean, kind of sometimes you can like tell from the from the URL that something is fishy. Right? Web traffic, um, and then the YouTube, so kind of you're looking into YouTube channels of those media. You're looking not only at what they say, but how they say it. Kind of you're analyzing the speech signal and see if you know they whether this kind of a lot of emotions and things like that. Then their audience in Facebook. So Facebook actually profiles its users and exposes this information to advertisers. So you can go and you can ask Fox News, what kind of, how many, how many conservative, very conservative or liberal and very liberal and so on users Facebook Fox News has, right? And, and uh, hey, this is not just based on interaction with the Fox News page on Facebook. No, no, no. They are tracking us across <laughs> many websites. Okay? Um, Twitter. Right? What is the bias uh, with respect to different uh, uh, topics? So here we are monitoring, we are looking into Twitter users, and we are checking whether they are going to use uh, a share from a specific website in support of their argument. So for example, we, they are discussing, people are discussing, let's say, immigration. I'm going to share, if you're on the left side, or a pro-immigration or anti-immigration website, kind of a link from Russia Today, you know, to, to kind of support your argument. And then we see kind of from which side you have more, right? And actually for us today it's very interesting because you see that this kind of both left and right support, supporting both right and left constitutional. 
In this kind of themes, I'm not going to go in much detail, but uh, it's about 80% accuracy of both total trials and um, Then there is this kind of, I was telling you about this, that, you know, so here we have, here the extreme left, here the extreme right media, here kind of the least bias in the middle, and here the most functional, here the least functional. And you see this is the media by Sharp, somebody else has done it. Basically, the further away you go from the big neutral, the more partisan you become, the less trustworthy you are. Okay? And obviously, this means that you might want to model for trial and bias <coughs> one in this what we have done, right? And uh, so you have jointly and so on and so forth. You are also modeling hyperpartisanship and things like that. Um, and this helps. Now, so we published the original work on this, uh, on predicting the trial bias of entire websites back in October 2018, and this attracted a lot of media attention. And I'm not saying this to say, oh, you do great work, and you know, there is kind of, you know, a lot of media attention. No, let's look at what they write, okay? So you get things like, oh, detecting fake news at its source, it's an interesting idea, you know, looking at the source as opposed to checking claims. Um, and then you have the hype. Facebook might be eager to get its hands with this latest fake news AI. Okay, they did contact us after that, but, but that's not the point. Right? But you know, those kinds you might expect. You might expect some, you don't expect quite something like this, like even the best AI for spotting fake news is too terrible. Okay. I mean, this is about the same research. It is a research paper, it's not even political, right? Think about it. What can happen about the political event? But I did not expect, expect this. MIT allies with Islamic terror state to censor conservatives. This is because this paper, right, had, we had, it was in cooperation with MIT, so we have MIT people as co authors, and they are calling Qatar Islamic terror state, right, and our joint goal with MIT is to sign on conservatives. This is what we are doing, okay? <coughs> and obviously, you can go and you can see, you know, this kind of news outlet, you know, who they are, and uh, this is kind of our analysis of, this, uh, of their neutrality with this algorithm that I have presented to you. And you can see that they are extreme right, hate group, and so on and so forth, according to media bias function. Um, and this kind of gets us to the last topic, it's like about propaganda. What is propaganda? Okay, so first of all, I, I told you about you know, <coughs> disinformation. Disinformation is something that has two elements. One, it's false. Two, it means harm. Okay, now propaganda. Propaganda also has two key elements. One is your time to convince somebody of something, and second, you do it on purpose. Okay? If there is no intent, there is no propaganda. Okay? Now, there are two interesting things here. First of all, propaganda is not good, it's not bad. It's not part of the definition. Propaganda can be good. I can, the state can have a propaganda to vaccinate your children. That's good. Okay? And then propaganda is not true, it's not false. It's not part of the definition. Okay? But if you want to engage in disinformation, we have to use those propaganda techniques. You can use this for good, for bad, but you have to use them. So he is name calling. This is one technique. The evil has one. Okay? Here's another one. This is called Bangbago. All 57% are saying they are going to vote for Clinton, which means we are on the winning side of history. Come join us, right? This is Bangbago. Okay? There are others. Again, he is kind of, uh, you know, appeal to fear. So here Greta Thunberg is trying to scare us that, you know, species are dying, you have to do something about it. I mean, now this is propaganda for good cause. Okay? So propaganda is not necessarily bad. So we are looking into 18 propaganda techniques and we have actually not developed a system to detect that. And we have a model, I'm going to skip that, but basically um, what we are doing is we are kind of finding those in text so that we are showing you how we are being manipulated. Okay? And the thing is that after in kind of interacting with a system like this for a while, you actually start learning you know, how you are being manipulated. And, yeah, I'm going to, the very last part, so this is kind of some our collaboration with, with um, um, uh, Al Jazeera, the other one, Associated Press, uh, Tech Machindra, uh, Metalink with Vinova. So um, they were interested in you know, kind of building something to analyze their own content. They want to know whether their own content is factual, whether their own content is biased, things like that, right? So, and for example, we can upload a video that can tell you, oh, there's a claim that we know is false. It was fact-checked before, so it was kind of true. Or, you know, there's, there's a speech you can, oh, this is biased on the left side, right? And kind of you want to know that, because maybe then you want to show something that is kind of biased on the other side, so we have a little bit of balance. 
uh, or kind of this is kind of graphical thing. Now this truck is going to hit those people you want to signal because this is not something that you can show. Um, it will get an award. So we have APIs for this, so that you can actually you know uh, build a system based on, on what we have developed. So for example, it's an API which you can say if an article is going to channel this propaganda or not, this fine grain propaganda analysis uh, is, is there also it, for article it can tell where it's left, center, right biased. In an article, you can tell what are the most suspicious claims. If you want to select what you want to fact check first, it's going to tell you those are most suspicious. And you know, actual fact checking we also have. Um, we also have a plugin that you can install. So that as you're reading the news, you can click there, it can tell you something about this website. Um, we are hiring postdocs and scientists. So if somebody has interest, let me know. And I want it super quickly to show you uh, the system. Maybe. Come on. Big.org. Okay. So it's after that from big.org, and then in the meantime, I'll do this. Big.org slash. So this is Tambi. Tambi is a news aggregator, something like Google News. And as you read, it actually tells you, oh, this is some propaganda here. Okay? Why? That's a different story. I can show you kind of that we have analysis that actually can explain, right? But also can I can click here and I can get some information about you know, this news source, right? Um, I can learn um, about whether uh, you know, about this specific article, I can, I can learn whether they are central, whether they are hyper-partisan, the degree of propagandistic content in there, um, then what is the general frame of reporting? You know, any event has different aspects. For example, Brexit or, or whatever has, uh, you know, it has a political aspect, has a legal aspect, has an economic aspect, has a human rights aspect, quality of life aspect, and so on and so forth. If you're looking into that, so it kind of telling you, uh, you know, how they report, what is the perspective, then the fertility of reporting, do you trust them or not, based on all these things. Are they left, right, leaning? What is their audience? Are they kind of conservative, liberal? Um, what is their stance in different uh, kind of, you know, uh, specific topics? So for example, if you're reading an article today that tells you that climate change is actually not related to human activity, it's a natural phenomenon, if you give you background information that they have a history of being half skeptical, they will take it in one way. If you tell that they actually have like very concerned about climate change, but today they publish this article, they will tell, take it in a different way, right? So that this background information is important, right? Um, another thing that we have, uh, so for example, we have, I don't know, let's say, um, coming, okay? So we have profiles of entire events based on, on what has uh, happened. So for example, here we have, uh, I don't know, it's showing you something about the Sri Lanka bombings. It actually tells you who is publishing about this, from which country, where propaganda comes from, what are the most active countries and uh, media, um, and then what is the perspective from which it's being reported. And then the other thing that we have is, this is, this is about Brexit here, and, uh, but you can, you can look into other, other events. And we're actually showing you, um, you know, the specific techniques that have been used. 